Someone mentioned, do you think you could have the perfect season, you know, could you win everything? I thought about it in the evenings quietly to myself, what it would mean and if it was possible, you know. I kept saying, it's not possible because no one's done it before, so it must not be possible. There's nothing like racing, you know, there's nothing like that speed, that sort of demand on your bike and your body. You've got to be consistent, you've got to be there every race, race after race. Things go wrong, you've got to overcome them and, you know, I think the World Cup, for a racer, it's the best feeling to win that. You know, I live for racing, I love it. <laughs> Fort William was the first time I heard about this record number of wins. You're so focused on each race, you don't even really think about that whole bigger picture. So we're just chasing the most consecutive World Cup wins ever. Everyone was talking about, can you do 10 in a row, can you do 10 in a row? And I was like, well, I need to just focus on, on doing one this day, you know? Are my shoelaces tied? Do I have my gloves on? Am I getting on the lift in time? I remember standing on the thing with my hands in the air like a 10, and everyone taking photos and I was like, this is well cool. <laughs> If you win qualifying and the finals, you'll have won the overall. You know, it'd been too close in Lenza Hyde, 0.7. And at Mount St. Anne, I felt like I needed to, you know, go out there and smash it. You know, I just wanted to smash things. And I was angry all weekend, you know, I was angry at everyone. I put all that into, into my race running. And I won by 11 or 12 seconds. And it was kind of an eye-opener, you know, to know that I can ride aggressively and, and make it work. It was pretty cool. Coming into World Champs, I wanted to win so much. On one of my practice runs in the morning of, of race day, my arms gave up, my body just gave up, and I just crashed onto my head and just lay there. And then watching it back on the Athens dailies, it was the lamest crash ever. And I felt like it was a massive crash. I was like, whoa, cra I'm crashing. When it came to my race run, you know, it was all or nothing. No one wants to be second at World Champs. No one cares. I came out at the start and that was it. Just like, <laughs> you get to the bottom of Valdesol and it's like, you're absolutely ruined. And I remember thinking, I'm going too slow. I'm throwing it away, but I can't go any faster. I saw a crash. I just came into the finish and then I turned around and looked at the board and I saw my name and I was just like, Oh my God, I never will. Did I think she'd do it? I thought she could do it, but she kept her together. What a run, great run. Not much to do all week. And then on the race day, it's just like super sensitive. Everybody's like walking on eggshells and just high and really stressed. But she seems to cope with it really well and just keep her head clear. And she does the job. She does her job again and again. So I'm quite impressed actually, even though I'm a dad. You know, it's total, like, joy, you know, sheer sort of disbelief. And then I realised that that means the perfect season, and, and I was just like, 
you know. And then I found Dad and Brownie and everyone. They were hugging me so tight, I could hardly breathe. You're just like, ugh. <laughs> 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 oh, Rachel. That was mad. <laughs> Holy. That was a wild one. At World Champs, I used every little bit of knowledge from everyone that I could. You know, I, I got help from everywhere, and it was a massive team effort. All the weeks in the off season where you just training away, and no one sees that. You know, it all accumulates in that one title. And yeah, I mean the perfect season. It happened. It happened to us. It happened to me. And I don't even know if it'll ha it won't happen to me again. But we won't forget it. Yeah!